Right now, we want to welcome a very special guest who is going to kick off the first day of our conference. Abby Finkenauer is the Special Envoy for Global Youth Issues at the U.S. Department of State. Abby has a very interesting background. She served in the U.S. House of Representatives representing the state of Iowa. In fact, she was one of the first women from Iowa ever elected to the U.S. House and was only the second youngest woman ever elected to that office. Abby is here to talk about empowering youth through advocacy and civic engagement. And she's joining us from New York, where she is participating in the United Nations General Assembly. Please join me in welcoming Abby Finkenauer. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh Susan, always good to see you, even if it's virtually. Um, I feel the you. same way. So thank you for joining us. Yes, and thank you for all that you do. Um, it's always an inspiration to hear you and your passion um, about this work. Um, it is something that uh, I think about often, obviously. And again, thank you for everything you do. And Yolanda, so excited uh, to, to see Look you and meet to you meeting virtually. you. Yes. Um, and to all that are on this call, oh my goodness, there is um, what a wealth of extraordinary people um, here who care about young people who are trying to do the best they can in so many different ways. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the invitation um, to be part of this and having me uh, at the World Federation of Youth Clubs Virtual Summit. Um, again, I am former Congresswoman Abby Finkenauer, and actually the first special envoy for global youth at the U.S. Department of State. Um, I was appointed by President Biden in November 2022, uh, basically to lead U.S. government efforts uh, to hear from and most importantly, elevate the voices of young people around the globe in spaces where we need them most, which is, as you all know, literally every space. Um, you see youth engagement and participation is not just a nice to have, it is a requirement. And quite frankly, it is a, to the benefit of civil society and governments around the world. At a time when, well, the world is facing many, many complex challenges. And with more than half of the world's population under the age of 30 years old, I really believe, and I know you are on this call, you are part of this organization, you do the work you do because you believe that young people are the ones who can and must create the change needed to reach our goals. And we have to work hand in hand to address the issues that are important to our communities, but also around the globe. And we have to work together to make space for those young people to be heard. Um, and again, that is why I'm absolutely thrilled to get to talk uh, uh, with all of you about the importance and impact of everything that you are doing working with young people and why we cannot slow down. Um, as youth coordinators on this call, you ensure that young people have the tools and the skills that they need to actually take that action, tackle even foreign policy challenges. And I know this sounds a little cheesy, but it's why we do what we do and to make the world a better place for future generations. Uh, as I reflect on my own journey, I think of some of my teachers uh, who were absolutely essential part of my story and my journey into public service. Uh, you see, I grew up in a small town uh, in the middle of the United States in a state called Iowa. So uh, <laughs> it actually has uh, more cows than people, as I would say, a very small school. I think there were 40 kids in my entire school. And um, as I was growing up, I mean, it was interesting. My I'm first generation college grad. My dad was a union pipe fitter welder. My mom um, was a public school secretary. And um, to be honest with you, growing up, they, they weren't super involved in politics. I don't even know if they voted. Um, they do now, thank goodness, um, which everyone should in, in every country, make sure you vote um, but and get your voices heard. But it just, again, I, I say that because it was not something I was exposed to, right? But I had absolutely extraordinary teachers who at a very early age, I still remember about 10 years old, we would get something called the weekly reader, which was basically a newsletter really geared towards um, age appropriate content that um, a 10 year old could understand about what was happening in the world. 
And it was during those times where we'd read the weekly reader and then our teachers would give us space to talk about it that I realized very early at that young age that what was happening overseas was impacting my small agricultural community, but also what was happening in my small agricultural community was impacting overseas as well. And it was very important to start paying attention. And again, that happened because those teachers making those spaces. Um, I then remember going to middle school where I went from a small school, right, of 40 kids to all of a sudden having 420 kids in my seventh grade class. And um, I, was a little nervous. I was, you know, a seventh grade girl um, trying to navigate all of the things and all of the pressures that come with that. And uh, I credit so much to one of my teachers who um, saw really early uh, that I was in her class. I would ace the test. I would do very well on all the tests, but I wouldn't answer questions. I kept my hand down. I was so quiet, which is, I know, very shocking to anyone on this call that I was ever quiet. Um, but I was. I was shy. I didn't want to. I, I was actually almost afraid of being a young girl and appearing smart, um, which is so sad, but something that I know so many young people deal with. Um, and this teacher pulled me aside and asked me, what did I want to do with my life? I'm like, I don't know, I'm in seventh grade. What do you, I mean, how am I supposed to um, figure that out? And she encouraged me to really think outside the box. Like, what am I interested in? And I told her about how much I used to love the Weekly Reader, all the Newsweek, and she ended up um, nominating me to a camp for political science when I was in seventh grade at the University of Iowa. And it was during that time, right, where I was at that camp that these amazing leaders, these these um, awesome mentors that were there gave me that permission to be curious, to um, dive into more things that I was interested in that really sparked, right, um, that curiosity and also that safety in being able to explore all that and ask the questions and start being more involved. I mean, that literally, literally changed my life. Same thing as I would into high school, more of those teachers or folks in different camps or these mentors within the community who just wanted to lift us up, right? Um, and took that time and that energy. It's so extraordinary to me now because looking back, right? None of those teachers, those camp counselors, those mentors, right? None of them knew that there was the future, one of the first Congresswomen from Iowa sitting in their classroom or sitting in their um, uh, their club, right? None of them knew that, um, but it didn't matter because they were going to give everything they could to every single person there. And that's the thing, right? You don't know what the real impact is yet. Um, some of you do, right? Some of you have heard those stories, um, but so many of you, right? You, you may not even see it, right? It may be 30, 40 years down the line um, where what you did, those moments you had, what you kept giving um, just comes back tenfold. And um, it is so much a part of why these the World Youth Clubs, it's so important, right? And this network of people to keep you going as well um, when times do get hard, to remind yourselves, right? of those impacts you make and those stories and to make sure um, that you never give up and that, again, you may never know um, how much uh, it will impact in the future. And so I'd hope to take with you today um, that you are an absolute essential piece of young people's journey and their story. Um, they'll look back on their experience and think of the impact you've had. Um, and also, in many cases, as I just told you mine, how you change the course of their lives. Um, so I, I have to also mention, I was absolutely honored to get to actually visit one of the Boys and Girls Clubs in Mexico earlier this year and saw a, a firsthand the impact of the good work you all do. Um, I will never forget witnessing the energy, the enthusiasm of, of the young people 
not just engaging in sports, which was like kind of easy to get excited about, right? But like building robots and and doing dances that they were expressing how they felt. And also the one thing that really got to me as well was watching the parents come and interact and and just how important that was, yes, for those kids, but also for those parents and and seeing that ripple effect within the community and what that does and how you lift so many people up is absolutely inspiring. Um, I'm so you have absolutely successfully created a space for that next generation of global leaders who will tackle all of these issues that we talked about. Um, I just wanna, again, thank you for your leadership, inspiring young people to think critically, um, develop cross-cultural skills and take action, making a difference in the world. Again, what this is all about. So as I close, I have just uh, um, one last story to share. So within the State Department, we have a lot of different youth leadership programs. They're all around the globe, um, different fellowships, um, kind of for, um, usually it's like 20 to 25 age range. Uh, so they're kind of either in college or young professionals. And so one of them was Young Southeast Asia Leaders Initiative. And there was a week where there was 100 women from Southeast Asia. We gathered in Indonesia together and um, it was all focused on climate resiliency and also taking care of themselves in this activism space as well, um, making sure that they are feeling like they can keep going, which we all know right now, young people are dealing with so much when it comes to that online hate space and everything that they're dealing with. And so it was really kind of focused around that. Well, part of what we do, and you all I'm sure uh, relate to this, is do service projects because we wanna make sure people continue to give back to their community. So we did a mangrove cleanup and I show up and um, as we got there, um, I'm with, again, all these extraordinary young women. We're given boots, we're given our gloves, and then we are told at this mangrove, by the way, it is high tide. And I go, oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, I'm like, I was wondering if I should have brought waders or what was I supposed to do? And they said, no, 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 you're not getting in the water. You're supposed to walk through the mangroves. And then there's this beach area where there's trash that is washed up and we need you to collect. We're like, okay, off we go. And so off I go with these 100 women. And as we're walking through the mangroves in the water, again, it's high tide, you can see the trash, right? And there's trash in that water and it needs to be picked up. And these women, instead of walking all the way through to the beach area, which would have been easier, would have been a lot less messy, they started getting in the water because they saw work that needed to be done and they wanted to do it. And as I watched this, okay, the first thing that came into my head was, oh my gosh, uh, are there snakes? Are they safe? Um, turns out, yeah, there were definitely snakes, but they were safe and everything, they were, they were good. But the second thought was, my gosh, these young people, they're gonna save the damn world. And um, as I watched them, right, some some of the women felt comfortable up to their waist in the water, grabbing the trash. Some um, where I was more more in the the mix was more like up to the boots, um, grabbing it back in. Some um, on the top, uh, tying bags, sending the bags back down. And nobody organized us. This was nobody said this is what you should do because again, that's not even where we were supposed to be. And so I just watched this, and as I was watching it, hit me like this is what real change making work is um where every single layer needs the other um one couldn't have happened without the other it wouldn't have mattered if the girls were all the way out there if every single girl got in that water um up to their waist who was going to help tie the bags send them back down right um and who was going to be in the middle and so every layer mattered and it again that is what change making work is when there are times in your life, right, where it depending on what organization or cause you care about, where it makes the most sense to be deep in that water on that front line doing that kind of work. And then there's times where it's cool, you're going to be in the middle, helping send those resources back down. Um, it just depends and to be open to that, right, of where you can give the most um, in your life at those moments and allow yourself also to be inspired by all of those around you who are doing that work. Um, you're important, every single one of you on this call. And again, the impact you were making is absolutely extraordinary. And so thank you. Thank you for who you are, for what you're doing. And again, what an honor to get to be here to help kick it off. Thank you, everyone.
Abby, thank you so much for joining us today. Your passion is contagious. Absolutely unbelievable. And we, we greatly appreciate you. So what you were saying about young people and what they're facing in the world today, all around the world. Yeah. And I mean, that's one thing that I hope that we uh, can continue to work on is helping them prepare to be good global citizens. And, and the other thing is we have a friend here in Florida who started a, a program to clean up the waterways. And so that is, Frank Weaver's his name, and that's uh, what you're saying is exactly what people need to do. It's grassroots, start at the bottom, and, and you're in exactly the right job because <laughs> you are just filled with, with joy and wanting to help people, especially young people. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to continuing our conversations. Yes, thank, thank you. you And all. introducing you to Yolanda. Yes, thank yes, you. yes. <laughs> can't wait to meet you in person, Yolanda. Likewise, okay. likewise. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have so a good much. day at yes. the UN. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.